In case you hadn't noticed, Hot Hatch is a big business once again. No self-respecting car maker can do without one in their model lineup, and not a month seems to go by without yet another, even hotter one, sending motoring journalists into a frenzy. So we brought our favourite six-pack here to Anglesey to see what's currently hottest of the hot. MG Rover have maxed out the 25 to make it the ZR. BMW's Mini Cooper now comes with an S that makes it supercharged. And in response, Renault have shed the kilos and the price with this stripped-out Clio Cup. But it's this 197 horsepower Honda Civic Type R that holds the hot hatch crown. Now, though, two big heavyweights have arrived, offering over 200 horsepower. The Seat Leon Cupra R and the hot hatch everyone is talking about, the Ford Focus RS. So what's our verdict? Well, I am a big fan of everything MG are trying to do to put some life into old Rovers. But whilst this ZR has much improved looks and handling, it is the least powerful of our bunch. I'm sorry, but the interior is, well, awful. Good, but could do better. The same, though, can't be said about BMW's Mini Cooper S, with its fantastic retro looks, both on the inside and the outside, and a heritage to match, meaning it's sure to sell and sell and sell. But like the MG, it lacks serious grunt. I'm sorry, but that whining supercharger is not for me. Renault's Clio Cup 172, on the other hand, seems like the perfect mix. It's very light, it looks mean, and it's the cheapest car here, a bargain at just under 13 grand. But cutting costs and weight by throwing out such modern day essentials as ABS and aircon hardly seems like progress to me. Which is why Honda's Civic Type R has ruled the roost for the past year or so. It's still quicker to six in the Clio, despite the Renault's crash diet. It's a full-on racer with a lightning gear change and all the joys of Honda's fabled VTEC power plant allied to edgy, adrenaline-pumping handling. This is what the new boys on the block have got to beat. So let's remind ourselves just how good it is. So just wait till the rev counter goes past 6,000 and then let it sing all the way to its 8,200 RPM limit. This is what I call mechanical music, none of those twittering turbos or whining superchargers. This is a real engine. And the driving position is also so good, I sit low in a very supportive seat. I've got the steering and the pedals right where I want them. I've also got this sexy little gear lever right beside me. And the handling, the car feels so light, I can turn. Just a little bit of oversteer is easily caught. It feels much lighter and nimbler than any of the opposition that I've driven so far. One word of warning, though, in the wet, that uh, mild oversteer can become a bit of a snap. Another criticism is also the traction's not that good in the wet, but it's dry today. The Civic sets a target lap time of 54.9 seconds around the challenging Anglesey circuit. So, to take on the Honda, Seat have squeezed 210 horsepower under the Leon Svelte Spanish uniform. Sounds good to me. The first thing you notice is just how smooth the power delivery is of this turbocharged engine. No sudden boost at all, just constant pressure. There is a lot more understeer, a lot more roll. It's generally a much softer car than the Civic, which is why on the road it's actually a more pleasurable car to drive because it's got a better ride around this racetrack. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun, but I don't think I'm going very quickly. Impressive, but not really hot. A fact underlined by lap time 1.1 seconds slower than the Hondas. 
So what about Ford? Well, they knew how good the Civic was and how powerful the Seat was going to be. So they turned to their rally team for inspiration. And like their world rally car, it's full of parts from specialists like Quaife, Garrett, AP, Saks, Brembo and Sparco. All top shelf automotive pornography for the die hard enthusiasts. It's not such good news on the inside, though. In keeping with the tradition of previous fast Fords, the interior is very Essex. You've got blue dials, blue trim, blue seats, a part blue steering wheel and a green starter button. But I'm not here to spend my time worrying about fashion. I'm here to feel just how good this RS is on a racetrack. It doesn't start that well because I'm sitting a bit high in these snazzy seats. They don't exactly hold me as well as I'd like them to. But I'm immediately impressed by the power of this turbocharged engine. First gear for the hairpin and straight away tucks into that tight apex. Good traction. This racing differential that they've developed for this car hold of the tarmac and launches this focus forward. by just 0.3 of a second. But you have to pay the price away from the track. You see, on public roads, it's not quite so convincing. That race bread limited slip differential that provides such sharpness and traction on the circuit becomes its own worst enemy. As the boost pressure chimes in and out, the steering weight constantly varies. Many little hollows or odd cambers will pull the nose of the car this way or the other without really giving much warning. It becomes a nervous drive on country roads. The ride is also very, very harsh and the damping quite severe. This is a car really only for hardcore enthusiasts. So before you rush down to your local Ford dealership to try to put your name down for one of the four and a half thousand RSs to be built, I suggest you consider its on-road manners, its garish interior, and the fact that you only get a fiver's change out of £20,000. Oh, and yes, that there's a 240 horsepower Volkswagen Golf due any day now. Right now, though, there's no doubt the Focus RS is the hottest of the hot on the track. But the Seat is a much smoother and better mannered road car. And for me, the best compromise between the two, and still the overall king of the hot hatches, is the Honda Civic Type R. <laughs> <laughs> 